friends, Kelly Calabrese here with your intentionally fabulous tip of the day. And today is about suffering. We've all experienced it, right? No one will get through this life without suffering. It doesn't matter how good you are. Some of the goodest people, uh, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, experience excruciating suffering. So it's not about being good or bad. It's kind of an old, old question that has been around and that philosophers have debated forever about why we suffer. And there's a lot of different theories about why we do. One is certainly free will, right? We do things that cause our own suffering. Uh, Jesus said, in the world, you will have trouble. So I have overcome the world. So it could have nothing to do with us. In fact, it says that we're not warring against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So it's not necessarily, you know, blaming God for creating wars and rape and all of that. A lot of that does have to do with free will. So regardless of why you believe that you suffer, there are some good things about suffering, especially since no one is going to get out of this life without it. One is that if you're feeling suffering, that means you felt a high, you felt a mountaintop, you knew what it was like to be in a great place because now you're in a place of lack or loss or fear or pain. So you had to know there was a high and you're in a place of low, but that means there's going to be a high again. The low doesn't last forever unless people choose to stay stuck there, which I really hope you don't. Um, the second thing is you could really get to the root of why the suffering is there. So for example, maybe you were a perfectionist and it cost you a relationship. Maybe you were really going to an extreme in a certain area and that cost you some suffering. So it's a good opportunity to really look and go, what was my part in it? Because even in a relationship, even if it was abusive, which is awful, it's never 100% one person and 0% the other. There's always some part, some responsibility. So you can really have introspection and figure out, okay, what is it and how do I dig that out and then fix it, hopefully for good. Another is humility. It's really an opportunity when you are suffering that maybe you are taken to your knees. I mean, maybe you wind up losing everything, your job, your family, your health. I mean, there have been some pretty challenging situations that people have had to face and it just humbles you to again be thankful for what you had humbles you maybe to have to ask for help and also to um, give grace to other people who may have had some suffering as well another is that you might be able to drop the expectations and demands so maybe you realize that you were so you know, gung-ho and had such high hopes that you are deserving of something that really none of us are necessarily deserving of. So maybe you feel like, I should have this, I should have that, I should have this great life and great wife and money and this and that, and then there was suffering there. So it's just an opportunity to say, you know, wait a minute, let me be thankful for what I have, and maybe I need to shift my expectations. I'm not saying don't go for greatness, but maybe an adjustment has to come and suffering is a way for you to look at it differently. Another is um, it can build your strength. So when you have pushback and there's some suffering, when someone says you can't or you've been rejected in a relationship, sometimes that pushback is what will get you to be stronger. So that's another benefit of suffering. Also, it can be our greatest teacher, right? You have heard this from anyone who has done anything successful ever, especially athletes, especially business people, entrepreneurs, that they learn their greatest lessons in the pain, in the loss, in the suffering more than they ever did in any successes because the pain and the suffering causes them to press in. Another is... Um, Sometimes the greatest suffering comes right before the greatest triumph. So we're really forced to look at, okay, this didn't work. How did I get here? Which, you know, may or may not be a good question, but it makes you go, okay, um, what great can come of this? Because I don't ever want to suffer this way again. And sometimes there's just resistance against you right before something great is about to happen. It seems like everything may fall apart. And again, it builds that strength. It may also deepen your faith. You know, sometimes you get to a point where the struggle is so real that you have nowhere else to turn except to turn to God. And you really press into that relationship 
And then you'll start to see miracles and things will happen that there's no other explanation except but God. And he will use your suffering to connect you to him even closer. Um, another one is uh, more compassion for others who may have suffered something even greater than you have, whether it was a bankruptcy, a divorce, you know, anything that's really heartbreaking, any ending, any death. So it just gives you compassion for others. And then finally, you know, it's a good reality check when you're suffering just to evaluate, okay, what's going on? Um, what do I have to be thankful for? Just shifting that attitude towards gratitude when you're in suffering. And just, friends, when you're suffering, make sure you don't stay there. Suffering is not meant to be forever. Do not stay stuck in suffering. So I hope that helped you out today. Whatever you're going through, um, just know that it will be better. This will not be forever. Do your part. God will do his part. And if this tip helped you, and I hope it did, I would love if you went to my Facebook private group. It's called Intentionally Fabulous, and I share lots of tips, and it's a great supportive community for any women going through stages of separation, divorce, post-divorce, who want to heal, be well, and live an amazing bonus life. So I'll meet you back here tomorrow with the next Intentionally Fabulous tip of the day. Have an awesome day, friends.